I am very happy to have you here. You are one of those people that have been in so many iconic shows I have loved over the years and films as well. Um, however, Peter Gibbons from Office Space, you are approached about this character a great deal, I hear. That's probably the one, yeah, that I get hit with the most. And people actually have, have told you that character is inspiring to them. Yeah, I, I mean, people will come up to me from time to time and say, you know, this movie and you were the reason that I quit my job and, and walked away from my livelihood. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and uh, I'm always a little, I, I wait five seconds <laughs> before I say good for you because I don't know which way it went. <laughs> and, uh, and then, yeah, and it's usually good or they wouldn't have, or they'd have just taken me out from yeah, behind. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then, you, this, so you're also in Sex and the City. Yes. You were Burger. Yes, it was Burger. And you had one of the great somebody recognizing you as Burger of all time. I feel like being uh, in that show, having a part in that show, explain who recognized you at a Lakers game. It was so surreal. I, uh, the agency I was with at the time had courtside Laker tickets. And uh, for some reason, everyone else must have been out of town because I got the invite to go. <laughs> and at some point during the second quarter, there was a, a ball out of bounds, and Kobe came over on the inbound, and he looked at me and did a double take and said, Burger? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow. That's really great. Yeah, I'll, I'll always have that. You'll always have that. <laughs> uh, I was mentioning to you uh, backstage, I've never seen the show. My wife's making me watch it. I'm enjoying it a great deal. I haven't come to Burger yet. I won't spoil it. Okay, great. Will I, after I see the Burger arc, will I think, man, Carrie, I wish Carrie had ended up with Burger? Only if you have a really messed up idea of relationship. <laughs> okay, gotcha. <laughs> well, well, we'll see. We'll see when that moment comes. Uh, you have... Uh, you have a five-year-old, yes? I do. I have a five-year-old and a two-year-old who's about to be three. And you are, uh, you're raising them in L.A., obviously. Yes. Um, how is, uh, obviously, you have a new show. You have billboards. Your face is on when they're driving down the street. How is that for them? It's kind of, well, first of all, I think kids today, it's not quite so weird to see people on TV because they, they see themselves on TV. Everybody can sure. you know, shoot everything. But the billboards are a little bit different, and... Uh, you know, the kids kind of respond to it, but it is L.A., so, um, you know, at uh, a couple of the other preschool dads were saying, yeah, my kid came and said, uh, Daddy, when are you going to be on a billboard? <laughs> I've seen three of them already of other parents in the school. <laughs> that is, uh, yeah, raising a very unfair bar. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, great values. Yeah. Great values. <laughs> um, you, uh, so this, this new show, I don't want to give too much away, but this is something that has been in the, the trailers and the promotion of the show. Uh, your character uh, commits suicide. Yes. And this is, you are still in the show from flashbacks. Yeah. Uh, what, what made you choose to do a show where your character so immediately uh, uh, dies? Um, <laughs> well, my first thought was I'm old enough to remember the big chill, and I thought, it worked out for Kevin Costner. Yeah. Right? Jackpot for Costner. Yeah, and he didn't even say anything. Yeah. So, uh, he was, like, in and out. Yeah, had, like, two right? days' work. Uh, he's dancing with wolves. I, you know, I... <laughs> I, uh, so I, I felt pretty good about it. It's also, I'm doing another show uh, on Audience Network called Loudermilk. It's season two that, of doing that. That's kind of my day gig. Uh -huh. So um, it, this one, it sort of had to be a limited thing or it just wouldn't have been able to happen. So gotcha. I, it was great. Are you in, how far into the process of season two are you on Loudermilk now? I think now? Uh, Loudermilk, we've, we've shot all, okay, all great. ten of them. Uh, and uh, a million little things were up to, I think, 106 or 107. So, and Lanerick is, for I don't know, this is another sort of complicated, uh, complicated character. Um, uh, explain that character a little bit and, and what made you want to do that one. Uh, he's basically the biggest a hole in the world. Uh huh. I think I could say that, yeah. Yeah, you can say okay. that. You can say the whole word if you want. Really? Yeah. Go for wow. try it. See how it no, feels. No, no, okay. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to find. That shows um, how different you are than Loudermilk. Yeah, you won't even say it. it. That's right. Yeah. Um, and, uh, he, you know, he's sort of like a, a, this deadbeat you know, misanthrope who's, uh, who is a, a recovery counselor, substance abuse recovery counselor for this group of uh, misfits and numbskulls. And it's, it's just classic, uh, you know, comedy. It's the Fairley Brothers. Uh, Will Sasso's on it. It's, it's a blast to do. And you, uh, obviously, working with great uh, television makers, great filmmakers. Uh, Matt Weiner, Ben Ben, has a new show called The Romanoffs. Yes. You're in that as well. Yes. That is a show, very uh, inscrutable trailer. Very hard to tell what the show yeah. is about. Do you, can you understand what it's about? Oh, I was in it, and I, I have no okay, idea gotcha. what it was about. I, I don't know. You're confident we'll all like it. I'm, I, I am. I think because Matt's a mad genius, but he is one of those guys that just likes everything to be secret so that it can... 
you know, do the whole thing. And, and uh, I, I, I respect that. Um, it's an anthology. Well, I don't know. I think it's an an <laughs> All I know is I'm in only one of them. So I, I hope everyone else is not all, in all of them, and I'm the only. Yeah, I yeah. Don't know. Oh, yeah, my fingers are crossed that you find out. <laughs> no, everybody but Ron's in all of that. Oh, I'll be like, oh, gosh. I, I, really, I looked really dumb on Seth Meyers. <laughs> you, uh, you have, uh, you're not from Chicago, but you lived there after college? Yes. And what brought you to Chicago in the first place? Um, you know what? It was just one of those things where I got out of school and I was kind of floating around. And I, I knew I was going to give acting a shot somewhere. I, I, uh, um, I, I was probably too chicken to come and try it in New York. I thought about Seattle for a minute because I didn't really know the difference between acting and music. <laughs> And, uh, and then sort of decided on Chicago because it was close to home and uh, Steppenwolf was a big deal. Sure. You know, had been a big deal, so we were all chasing that. You, uh, I, the first time I saw you was in Swingers. Did you meet those guys in Chicago? Did you meet Favreau there? I met John in Chicago and I met Vince. John and I moved to L.A. at about the same time uh -huh. and became closer friends sort of in, uh, in, by the fact that we were the only two people that moved to L.A. in that month and so we only knew each other. <laughs> Um, but he knew Vince from, uh, from doing Rudy earlier, the two of them. And they, uh, I mean, it's kind of a documentary, Swingers, of really of, of what it was like to be 26 in L.A. Yeah, would you, I mean, you know, I, I, you know, obviously one of the, you know, the legend of that movie is, you know, you guys couldn't possibly have known you were making this film that was going to, again, like sort of be this indelible mark on that moment in time, which it certainly is. Did you have any sense that it was going to be a film that people were going to see and remember for this long? No, we didn't think it was going to be a movie that we were in. We were, we rehearsed it. Well, we, we did readings of it for like a year trying to help John sell it with uh -huh. the idea that, well, we're never going to be in it, but maybe some producer will see us. <laughs> right. Know? And uh, and then it just worked out that we got to do it, and it's uh, it was, you know lightning in a bottle. Yeah, uh, a fantastic film. And uh, I was living in Chicago at the time, and it was so cool to us that like, oh my God, those guys who lived here went to LA and made a movie, and now everybody's talking about it. And so right, what are we doing in Chicago? <laughs> yeah, we got to get to LA <laughs> and do one of those producer tables.